Hey friends, welcome to today's video. I am so excited about this makeup. <laughs> so excited about this makeup. Um, today we're using all new, brand new products re that I recently purchased. These products you saw in a haul video that I recently uploaded. And I'm kind of loving what we created. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to apply my tinted moisturizer and I'm using the Radiant Skin Tint by La Mer. La Mer, I feel like I need to say that very fancy. <laughs> this is a beautiful product. I've actually used, been using this for the past week or so, and it's it's just beautiful. It is really beautiful, you guys. Um, I don't really purchase a lot of um, you know high end products at this price point. Um, so when I do, I have very high expectations, and this is a really really nice product. This is what the product consistency looks like. This is what the shade looks like. I got light medium, and it is just a beautiful, beautiful tinted sunscreen. It blends in so easily. I just use my fingers to apply it. It works really well under makeup. I have worn this with the um, Lancome Stick Foundation. Today, I'm gonna be pairing it with the uh, Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Now, when I use a product like this that has you know, some color to it, I make sure that I use much less foundation than I normally would. I'm very conservative with the amount of foundation that I apply on top of a tinted SPF like this. Um, Sometimes I'll just wear this by itself. I don't really think that I necessarily need to put foundation over this, but you know, for the sake of doing a full face of makeup, we are going to do that. So, oh, it's so pretty. I mean, it just it just blends into the skin so nicely. It looks very natural, has a very slight radiance to it. Um, you know, obviously you can still see the skin through it. It doesn't offer a ton of coverage, but it really does even the skin tone out. It's really gorgeous, you guys. It's really pretty. I know it's very pricey, but it is beautiful. Okay, next we're gonna go in with the Luminous Silk Foundation, and I picked up the shade uh, 5.9. This foundation is a really beautiful, natural, slight, radiant finish foundation. I put out a whole pump, but I don't even think that I'm going to use that full pump. Normally, if I hadn't used a tinted SPF, I would, but uh, because I already have a little bit of coverage and color, we are just going to use this very sparingly. So I'm using the 101 brush because this brush really allows you to spread product. And again, since I want this to go a long way and I don't want to use a lot, I'm going to start out with that. Normally you'll see me kind of press the skin to blend in, but since I want to shear this out, I'm just going to go in right away and start spreading. That's what I love about the 101 brush is that it's dense enough to really use and press if you like to do that, but it also has these longer fibers on the tip that allow you to, you know, pull and shear the foundation out. It's oh, so beautiful. So pretty. I mean, so this side has foundation and the La Mer tinted SPF. This is just the La Mer, and I feel like, I mean, obviously you get a little more coverage, but not a whole, I mean, it, it just goes to show how beautiful the La Mer is on its own. Okay, let's go and apply the rest. You can also use this brush in little circles. This brush is a very versatile foundation brush. It's probably why it's our number one selling brush because you really can use it in all the ways that you would use other foundation brush. You can use it to press and kind of um, almost like a beauty blender. You can use it to kind of press almost like a beauty sponge would apply it. You can pull it and shear it out like some of the older traditional style foundation brushes that look like paint brushes. You can kind of get that same um, application. And then you can even kind of buff it in little circles if you want to like buff it into the skin like a kabuki brush, which is what the, that's kind of the last to step that I do when I'm using this brush is at the end of my application, I'll just kind of go in little circles around my jawline and my hairline just to make sure that I have, you know, all the edges blended out really nicely. Perfect. Okay, now I do have some foundation left on my hand. I did not use all of that. Um, I would actually probably apply this as concealer at this point, but I'm gonna use the uh, La Mer Stick Concealer. This was a product that I shared in my haul video that I was really excited to get. I do think the color is a little too light. I'm actually gonna apply this on the right side without a color corrector so you guys can see the difference. Um, so this is just being applied you know, with nothing underneath my eye, just the concealer, and I'm gonna start in the inner corner. And I'm actually gonna use my finger to blend this out. This is a thicker consistency than like a liquid concealer. So the finger really allows you to press it into the skin and kind of blend. 
So it gives great coverage. I do feel like it's a little light on its own. Do you guys agree? What do you think? Do you feel like that's a little too light for me or do you think it works? Okay, and then last I'm gonna take my BK Beauty sponge and just kind of press. Especially when you have a concealer that is a little bit lighter, using a beauty sponge is a great way to, to really kind of make it um, meld with your foundation so it doesn't look so obvious. Okay, then on the other side, just for comparison purposes, I'm gonna put a little bit of a color corrector. I'm gonna use the uh, Fenty Beauty uh, Deep Butter Eye Brightener. And this actually has more of a yellow tone than a peach, so not really quite a peach color corrector. You know what, let me actually, let's not use this. Let me use more of a peach color corrector. We're gonna use the NARS Radiant Creamy uh, Color Corrector, and this is the light shade. And I'm just gonna do a tiny, tiny bit of this right here and right there. And I'm gonna blend this out with my finger and spread it. Kind of press it right there in the inner corner. This also has a creamy consistency, so pairing it with a stick concealer like the La Mer or a concealer that is a drier texture like the La Mer or stick concealers is nice because it's gonna give a little bit of hydration to it. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with the La Mer and I'm going to just apply a little bit, not as much. I don't need as much because again, I've already used a color corrector and I'm gonna blow this out with my finger. Ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, I do feel like you get a better look using a color corrector. Um, and that's not necessarily the formula of this, it's more the color. So if you have a concealer that is just really light, use a peach or a darker concealer down first and then just use this as a topper. I. <laughs> I've already used this several times, so I'm not gonna exchange it, um, but I really like this. I will probably repurchase another one in a deeper shade just to have. I really, really like it, you guys. And okay, so these are the two sides. This is the concealer alone. This is the concealer with a color corrector. I definitely think I like the left side better. Um, it's not necessarily because, well, let me, let, me, let me reframe that actually. The color definitely looks better because I put a peach color corrector down first. So if you ever purchase a concealer and it's way too light and for whatever reason you don't want to exchange it or return it, use a darker concealer or a concealer or a color corrector that has some peach to it down first and then use your uh, lighter concealer. Use smaller amounts of each because again, you're using two products. You don't need to use what you would normally use. Um, so that's one trick. But I also think because the uh, color corrector that I used is so creamy, it leaves a beautiful finish underneath a stick concealer. So if you have a concealer that's a little bit more dry in texture, or let's just say your under eyes are a little bit drier than they normally are and you're finding that your concealer looks drier, use something creamy down first, whether it's a creamy color corrector or even just reapply your eye cream, let it sit for a minute and then go in and apply that concealer because I do see a difference not only in color but also in the texture of the concealer. This looks more natural, really pretty. I feel like I need to go add a little bit of color corrector on this side just to even things out. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of that. This product is great because you can use it both ways. You can use it under concealer or you can use it over. And I'm gonna use the beauty sponge to blend this out because I want to make sure that I'm absorbing any excess product. Since I did do it on top, I don't want it to be too peachy. So pretty. Okay, now I feel like I have a good complexion look. I have some brightness under the eye, but it's not too bright. I really like that La Mer concealer, it's really nice. Okay, next we're gonna go and set everything and we're using the La Mer Pressed Powder. Um, this is the shade Light 12 and it's the Sheer Pressed Powder. I have been using this for a bit and I do enjoy it. Um, I'm gonna use this, I'm actually gonna use a Sigma brush. This is the Spotlight Duster. This is what it looks like, I really like the shape of it. I'm gonna just pick up some product and kind of lightly dust it underneath the eyes, on the cheeks, on the nose, and on the forehead. Cut down any shine. So for brows, we're going to be playing with a new product. This is by Dior. This is the Kabuki Brow Styler, and it's a waterproof brow pencil. I got the shade Light Brown. And what is unique about this product, I've actually used it already, is the brush on it. So it's not like your typical kind of mascara wand spoolie type brush. It's more of, it reminds me of those little artiste brushes. So I'm gonna use this to kind of brush my brow hairs up. And the tip of this product has a thicker kind of triangular shape to it. It very much reminds me of the NYX Precision Brow Pencil. So it's not like a micro fine brow pencil. It's more of that thicker kind of waxier texture. I'm gonna pull this down so it's not too pushed up too high. 
my brows are really, <laughs> for not having much brow, my brows are actually kind of out of control. I'm way overdue. I need to find a new brow person, unfortunately. I love mine, but she is always so booked and you can't really get an appointment with her any sooner than like a month or six weeks out, I feel like. And my last appointment I had to cancel because we went out of town. So it was all, I was already like three months since seeing her and then I had to cancel my appointment. So it's like, you know, it's just really hard. I need, I need to find someone that has a little more availability. If you're in the Austin area and you have a great brow person, please let me know down below because um, I could really use a good referral. Okay, so this is what the brows look like. This pencil is a lot warmer than I normally use. I'm gonna kind of use this to soften it. And I am gonna go in and apply a little bit of brow gel. This is the Kosas Brow Gel in the shade, also soft brown. And this is a little bit deeper, so I'm gonna be real light with my application. Perfect, okay. All right, you guys, let's warm the face up. I'm gonna go in and bronze the skin. I'm using the Ilia bronzer. This is a great powder bronzer. I love the color of it. And I'm using the BK Beauty 103 brush and I'm just kind of pressing the product onto the skin. This brush is shaped really nicely, so it just applies it. Really just warms up the face. Okay, for the eyes, I'm actually gonna skip my normal eye primer and I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Smoky Shadow. This is the shade 12 Sunrise. This is what it looks like. It's a little crayon, eye crayon. It has a nice kind of pointy shape to it. This is what the color swatch is like. It's a really beautiful, soft, warm copper, but it has, if you look really closely, it might be hard to see on camera. If you look really closely, it has the slightest little silver uh, reflex sparkle to it. It's really pretty. I wouldn't call this like a really light shade, but it's definitely not deep. It's kind of mid-tone. So I'm gonna use this as my lid base. Very creamy, very easy to apply, very smooth. I'm gonna apply this all over my lid and I'm gonna just kind of layer it up a bit so that I can kind of work it out with my finger. Perfect, okay. That is what we have. I think this is a great, easy kind of all over color on the days that you just wanna throw something on the lid but you don't really wanna spend a lot of time blending it out or adding other shades. I'm just gonna use my ring finger and I'm gonna kind of softly blend out to the crease. I don't wanna to go too hard because I don't wanna take off any color. I just wanna soften the crease a little bit. So now we're left about here. I'm gonna go in with a Patrick Ta palette and I'm excited to use this on camera. I have played with this a little bit um, at home, but this is what the palette looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen this. Um, you know, it's been out for a little bit of a minute. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna build a crease and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here this shade right here, we're gonna go and kind of create a little bit of dimension into the crease. So it's similar to the tone we have on the lid. It's a little warmer and matte though. But as far as like, you know, lightness or darkness, it's about the same level. But because it's matte, it's gonna give a little more definition in the crease. And I'm gonna kind of blow out this crease so the color really diffuses up and I'm gonna bring it all the way over into the inner corner, almost to like the side of my nose. So pretty. And then I'm gonna kind of go in little circles and kind of smoke that up into the brow. This is so relaxing. <laughs> I have not been sleeping very well. Last night, Paul had dinner with his dad and his brothers. He, Anyway, um, the girls and I decided to drag Brooklyn's mattress down to um, my room and have a slumber party, which was fun, but I didn't uh, sleep very well because like around two o'clock in the morning, Kate got out off the mattress and climbed in bed with us. And I love having my babies in bed. Like I truly love it. You know, like when the nights that she doesn't come in my room, she comes in my room most nights, but the nights that she doesn't, the next morning I'm like, you didn't come in my room. <laughs> I love it, but I don't sleep well. Cause you know how kids are when they sleep, they just move around so much. Okay, that's pretty. And I'm gonna kind of pull it out a little bit to kind of elongate the eye a bit. So pretty. Okay, I could kind of leave it here and I would be so happy, but I really wanna show more of this palette than just that one shade. For So for the sake of this video, let's dive in and play a little bit more. Um, okay, I am gonna go in with, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. Actually, I haven't used this shade much. Um, and I'm gonna grab my BK Beauty 203 brush and I'm going to load up the side of this brush. When you are trying to pick up a lot of color and deposit a lot of color, use a flat brush and use it on its side. Side. Don't use it on the tip. Use it on its side because that is gonna that's what's gonna pick up the most color for you. Then you can go back and press it onto the eyelid. 
if you were to use the tip and then use the tip that way, you're, you're gonna apply a color in a much sheer, lighter fashion. I mean, think of this as almost like your fingertip. It's gonna give that same effect, but just a little more control because of the shape. And I'm just kind of packing this right in the center of my lid. This is pretty. It's like a warm, rosy bronze shade. It's really beautiful. So just press, 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 kind of build that up right there in the center of the lid. Okay, next I'm gonna go in and we're gonna use this lighter um, kind of pinky champagne shade and we're gonna put this right in the inner corner. And for this, I'm gonna switch over to my 207 brush. It's just a smaller dome brush. We're going to pack that right in the inner corner. Woo, got some, some shimmer on the eyes today. That's pretty, oh, that's really beautiful. Then I'm gonna kind of pull that down a little bit right in the inner corner. I'm actually gonna go in with this lighter shade right here. It looks, uh, it's definitely more matte than this. This is a lot of shimmer to it, a lot of glitter. I'm gonna go with this shade. It still has some shimmer to it. So I'm gonna use this in the inner corner as my highlight. I like a softer sheen and shimmer right there than using something really chunky and glittery. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so I'm really liking the way this looks. I do wanna add a little more depth right out here in the outer corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this brush. This is a 242 by MAC. And it's a, just a really, this is an old school brush. Do they still make this? I'm not even sure. You can see the tip of it is just, you know, got a nice, like gives you a lot of control. It's really flat. It's got a nice like sharp kind of um, flat edge to it. So it really allows you to um, kind of control where you apply color. And I'm gonna go in actually with this shade right here, this darkest matte brown in the palette. And we're gonna pick up color. I am gonna kind of tap my brush because I am seeing quite a bit of kickback there and I don't want that to land on my makeup, my foundation. And I'm gonna use this brush to just apply that right where I want it. I'm not worried about blending this out at this point, so it can look a little crazy like that. That is totally fine. I'm gonna go in and do the other side. So I'm just using this flat brush to place. I'm gonna go and load up a little bit more. Okay, so see that looks a little crazy, but don't worry. I feel like this is like when you get your nails done and they like, you know, glue on the tips and you look a little crazy until they, you know, file it all out. That's what this looks like until we blend it. Then I'm gonna go in with a um, blending brush and I'm grabbing the 202 versus the 201. You could use either, but you can see the 202 has more of a pointed tapered tip, so it gives you a little more control. I'm not adding any color to this. There's a little bit left over from what I did yesterday. I'm gonna kind of wipe it off onto a towel. And we're just gonna go in and use that tip and just kind of go in little tiny circles right on top of that dark shade. I wanna soften the edges, I wanna diffuse the edges, but I don't wanna blend out that color too much. I want there to be a very much like dark light. Then I'm gonna kinda of pull it up and out a little bit to meet that shade that we pulled out. No, our dad's not here. What's up, babe? Someone's here. Four? Four, like, I don't know. Oh, okay. She wants you. Okay, I'll be right down. Okay, sorry about that. I had someone come to the door. So let's kind of finish blending this out a little bit. So basically what I'm using is I'm using the tip of this brush, placing it here, and I'm not really going back and forth. I'm not like covering a big surface area. I'm just placing it here and kind of moving in little circles so the brush is doing all the work for me. Again, I just wanna soften out the edges of this color, but I don't wanna necessarily blend it into what we've already done. I'm just gonna kinda do this. Once I've got as far as I can go with this brush, I am gonna switch over to a larger crease brush. This is the 201. And I'm just gonna kind of diffuse up the edge of this color. So pretty. Okay, I love this look. Like stepping away from it, like going downstairs and having a 10 minute conversation, coming back up and looking in the mirror, I'm like, ooh, I love my eyes. Okay, next I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna apply my um, brow highlight. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. It is a pretty good brow highlight. It's not too bright. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but it's not frosty or metallic. I'm just gonna kind of place that right underneath my brow to highlight, bring it over here a little bit. I do wanna kind of clean up this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my La Mer concealer and I am just going to take the um, tip of it and I'm gonna create a little bit of a line here. And this is just gonna kind of create a clean, nice, a clean, nice, crisp edge to my um, to my shadow. And let's see, I don't have a good clean brush, so we're just gonna use our finger. Ooh, okay, that looks good. That simple little step, you guys. 
I rarely do that, but gosh, when you do, it just really lifts the eye up. Next, I'm gonna go and line the eyes, and I'm using the Tattoo Liner by KVD Beauty, and I'm just going to try and do the slightest liner. I don't want anything thick. I just want a little bit of thin black liner. I am gonna kind of wing it out a little bit and pull it up. Perfect. Okay, so you can see I created a really thin, thin black liner. Then I'm gonna go in and tight line the eye. I'm using the Trish McAvoy um, gel pencil liner. And I'm just gonna run this all the way from the outer corner all the way into the inner corner. Now we're gonna go and create our lower liner. And I'm gonna go in first with a pencil. This is the Fenty Beauty um, eyeliner in the shade Puppy Eyes. And we're going to create a line from the outer corner to about middle of the way. This is a really beautiful bronzy liner. I did a video recently on eyeliner tips and I always recommend using a liner that has a little bit of a shimmer on the lower lash line. It just gives a softer look on the lower lash line. It also reflects light, so it kind of creates this more rounded, open, bright eye. Then I'm gonna take my 204 brush and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. We haven't used this. This is a kind of deeper bronze shade. It also has some shimmer to it, but it's not as thick and glittery as some of the other shades in the palette. And I'm gonna kind of run this directly on top of that. Ooh, that is beautiful. Okay, that is so pretty. That really magnifies and takes that shimmer up a level. Oh, that's so pretty. This actually translates a little brighter than I thought it would looking at it in the palette and how it goes onto the skin. It has like this beautiful copper, let's see. Ooh, yeah, look at that. It's definitely a lot warmer and coppery on the skin. So pretty. Okay, I'm kind of loving it. Then I'm gonna go in and line my inner rim with the Makeup by Mario brightening pencil. And last, we're gonna curl the lashes and apply mascara. This mascara gives so much volume. I'm kind of loving it. Holy moly, this mascara is insane, you guys. I mean, I feel like this looks like false lashes. Does this not look like false lashes? Crazy, I love it. I definitely built it up, but if this mascara can make my lashes look like this, like, it is good. I did get a little bit of mascara onto my lid. I'm gonna let it sit and then kind of clean it off once it's dry. The mascara wand is pretty large, so it's a little bit more challenging to apply than like a thinner wand. Next, I'm gonna go and apply blush, and I'm so excited to apply this blush. This is the Clay de Peau Blush Cream, and this is the shade two. Um, so I love this product. <laughs> I have the shade four and I love it. It's probably my favorite cream blush formula. It's just foolproof. It's so beautiful. It's not too creamy or emollient for a cream blush. Clearly a cream product, but it's as easy to apply as a powder blush, I feel like. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 108 brush and I'm just gonna go right into the little pot with my brush. And I think I applied too much. This color actually looks pretty bright. I'm gonna smile and I like to kind of place it on the apples of my cheek and kind of blend backwards, like back and up. So beautiful. This is so beautiful. This is such an easy cream blush to apply. You can use your finger or you can use a brush like I'm using. You literally just pick up the color and press. So buildable. You can get a very soft application or you can build it if you want more color. This color is pretty bright, so I have to be careful not to apply too much because I have been known <laughs> to apply too much blush. Okay, that is gorgeous. Okay, I love that. That is so pretty. I still think I like number four better. I feel like number four is a little bit more everyday. This is definitely a little bit of a brighter color, but it looks good. Okay, perfect. Next, we're gonna go in for lips, and I'm gonna start by lining my lips with the Patrick Ta Lip Liner. This is the shade She's Humble. It's a beautiful, beautiful nude lip pencil. I think this is a great pencil to cheat the lips and make them look a little bit larger which is what I'm gonna do. Oh, so pretty. This is probably my favorite lip pencil at the moment. So beautiful. Okay, next we're gonna go and apply lipstick. What do I have in front of me? What do I have, what do I have? We are going to, ooh, we're gonna use this. This is the Hourglass Unreal Lip Gloss in the shade Sublime. Ooh, no, you know what? Actually, we're not gonna use that. I forgot that I have this product here. It's the Makeup Forever Artist Nude Cream Lip Color. We're gonna apply this. And this is the shade um, 01 Uncovered. I thought this looked so pretty in the store. Ooh, yeah, uh-huh. 
Okay, that, this is like a classic nude lip. Okay, so the formula of this, super pigmented, very opaque, one swipe and you get full color and full coverage. It really reminds me of kind of like a traditional old school lip lacquer. Um, I mentioned this in my haul video and I think it's so true. I feel like the lip product, ca the lip category has really expanded. There's all these new innovative uh, formulas that have come on the market over the last couple years. But when you, when you try this product, you feel like this is one of those old school traditional formulas. No, like nothing fancy or fussy about it. Just like rich, pure pigment. The consistency is not super glossy or sticky, but it does have a, well, I shouldn't say not sticky, not super glossy or thick, but it does have a little bit of a tacky consistency to it. It feels comfortable. It's not drying, but it's not super balmy or hydrating or creamy either. It's kind of middle of the road. I feel like when the whole nude lip trend started, which was like forever ago, right? This was like that classic muted nude lip. It's really beautiful. I love it. Okay, so pretty. Okay, last before we end this tutorial, I have to add a little bit of the YSL 3D All Over Glow Powder. Um, I'm just going to, this is like a finishing powder, but I'm going to actually use it on the tip of my nose kind of right here. So if you like a very subtle highlight, or if you if you like the idea of highlighting the face, but you really struggle to find a powder that is not too shimmery or frosty or glowy or makes you look like a sweaty, shiny mess at the end of the day, this is your solution. This will give you the softest, very natural looking glow. Not only the formula is very um, soft and butter, not buttery, butter's another word, not very soft and diffused looking, but the actual color of it. It's not like this, you know, like frosty, moonstony, opal white color. It's this really beautiful, warm, peachy shade. And I do feel like all skin tones could use it. Honestly, I think this would look really beautiful on a deeper skin tone. And I think it would work also for a lighter skin tone. I'm just going to softly and lightly kind of press this in the areas that I want a little bit of a highlight. Oh, that is so pretty. Look at that. Look at that. I am actually going to try something else. We are going to use this in the inner corner of the eye because I think it'd be beautiful. Okay, this is gorgeous, you guys. This is gorgeous. If you like an all over glow, this will work all over the face too. But for me, I'm going to kind of leave it really, you know, in the right places and keep the rest of the skin a little more matte. And this is the finished look. I love this makeup. I love this makeup. Like this, oh, I love it. I love it. I feel like it's really beautiful daytime glam, but I think it's definitely up leveled enough to wear at night. It is so pretty. I have to say, I knew that I was going to like the Patrick Ta palette because the colors are, you know, neutral, warm. They're, you know, very easy to work with. I wasn't sure how much I would love these really glittery formulas, but they totally made this look totally made this look. They are super frosty and metallic, but there's something about the way that they lay on the eyelid that they just look like, I don't know, it looks almost like a liquid or a cream product, not like a powder. It's really beautiful. I love this makeup. I love every single product that I try today. I truly do. I was thinking that maybe I would try something that didn't quite work, but I really love everything that I tried. I'll have all the products that I use in shades, of course, listed and linked in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Get ready with me. Um, leave me all your questions and comments in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching my videos. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye guys. Thank you.